What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's video we're talking about sections in Revit. So sections are something that pretty much everybody knows how to create a section in Revit, but not many people go kind of in depth and explore the topic or the tool of the section in Revit. There is actually quite a bit of functionality and additional options and settings that we have with this tool that in a large part uh, remain unused to the majority of users just because it's not something that's uh, that uh, widely explained and known. So I decided to create a video where I'm just going to go from a complete novice level up to an expert level when it comes to using sections in Revit. So that's what this tutorial is all about. Uh, now before we get into that, the file that I'm going to be using for this is the house from my architecture design template. It's a template that has been designed to uh, kind of give you a minimalistic, clean, elegant look, and you can just concentrate on the architecture and then the template kind of covers uh, the rest of your needs. There is nothing to set up. Everything is already set up. The families are loaded in, so you can just get started uh, working on your project. Uh, so that's what we're going to be using. And if you're interested in that template, as well as the 1.2 hour or one hour and 20 minute course that comes with that template, that's available in the description. So just check, check it out just below the video. Uh, and yeah, uh, also make sure to subscribe, like and share this video. It helps me out a lot. It promotes the video here on YouTube. And without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is that project that I'm going to be using for this demonstration. And I'm just going to navigate here to the level one floor plan in order to uh, start placing our sections. Uh, now for placement of the sections, you have to start off the section tool. Uh, and the section tool is probably the easiest way to find it is here on the quick access toolbar. It's right up here, and here we have the section. Now, once you click on the section, it's going to go into well the section tool. It looks like it looks like this. The modify uh, tab turns into a modify section tab, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the only settings that we do have when it comes to uh, the modify uh, tab is here the offset. Uh, so we can add an offset. So just like placing lines with an offset, you can place sections with an offset. Uh, but th this is something that uh, I find is used very, very rarely. Uh, anyways, uh, let's now place our section. So when you click first, so let me just kind of arbitrarily click somewhere here. When you click first, and then when you pull out a section, uh, basically, the direction where the section is looking, in this case it's looking up, uh, when you pull out the line it's going to go to the right. So for example if you want to make a vertical section, if you go from the top down it's going to be looking to the right, but if you go from the down up it's going to be looking left. Same thing goes for a horizontal section. So if you go click and go right, it's going to look up, but if you click and go left it's going to look down. Now uh, if, it, if you place a section and it's looking at the wrong direction like this. So for example, one click here, I'm just going to go all the way down, click the second time, and also uh, make sure to find this, as you can see that little blue line, a blue dashed line, that's kind of indicating that this is snapped into a 90 degree uh, angle. And also it should snap at a 45 degree angle. As you can see here, we get that blue line. Here we don't, here we do have it. And then also horizontally. So uh, vertical, 45 and horizontal, you'll get that little snap. Anyways, uh, let's click here. So just vertically click and place that section. So once the section has been placed, it's going to look like this. And uh, basically you can flip it to the other side if you have placed it uh, and it's looking in the wrong direction. You can simply come here to the flip grip or the flip arrows, click there, it says flip section and it's now looking uh, towards the other side. Uh, also for the section, you will have the kind of graphical display of the section, which is indicated by the blue clickable uh, icon here on top, the blue clickable head. And then also here we have the, just this little kind of black rectangle. Now you can change both of these just by selecting the section and you can see that we get these little kind of circular arrows both on top and bottom. And if you come and you click on them, as you can see, it's just going to toggle to no symbol, uh, the arrowhead, uh, which is clickable, as I said, and then this same thing goes up here. So 
you can toggle between those. Now, when I say that this section head is clickable, that means that once you place the section, you can deselect it. And then when you come to the section head, as you can see, it kind of highlights. And if you double click, it's going to open that section up. And here we can see the kind of the actual section, uh, which is probably exactly what you want to have when you have that section. So you don't really have to go here through the project browser and search in the sections and then open it up. Uh, the way quicker way is just to go to the floor plan, find the section you want to open, and there we go. Also, it's easier because you don't have to search for the section name. Uh, you just click on the one that's pointing in the, the correct uh, direction. Uh, now, moving forward, uh, if you select that section and you go here into edit type, here we can see the uh, section tag. So that's referring to the kind of the section head and the section tail. And you can edit that here. So if you click in this field, you get this little builder button and that opens up a type properties. And here you can specify the section head as well as the section tail. So for example, here we have the section head and the section tail, and you can change that. As you can see, we have many different options and feel free to select one of these if that's what you want. I'm just not going to change it. I prefer working with the existing one. And also here you'll notice that we have this little kind of a little dash line here and three dash lines below. Uh, this will display the uh, sheet on which this is located once you locate this view on a sheet. So for example, if you locate it on a sheet that's called A1, A1 will display here in the section head, which is uh, really useful as well. Uh, okay, moving forward, uh, next for the section, the important thing that we would like to cover is the extents of the section. So what does that mean? Well, extents is what uh, the section is actually uh, looking at and what is it encompassing. So uh, when you select the section, you will notice that from the bottom of the head here, uh, all the way down here to the kind of the top of the section tail, you're going to get this dashed line that's going to go all the way around, kind of forming a rectangle. And it's also going to get these little uh, drag uh, grip points, which you can move around. Now, this is basically displaying uh, what does this section view? What are the extents of this section? So for example, if, you, if I go here to the wall tool and place a wall here, uh, this is a kind of the, the louver system. So let's place a regular wall, for example, like that. So if I place this wall here uh, and select the section, as you can see, it's not basically, it's not covering that wall. So if I open that section up, that wall will not be visible. So these extents are what uh, here in the section, we have this little box. So that's the basically the same thing. And this one here in the back is basically saying, well, it doesn't see past this point. So for example, again, let's use a wall, for example. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically, again, let's use the thick wall. Okay, so if I place a wall here, let's select the section. So as you can see now, it's within this boundary. And if I just open that section up, as you can see, we can see that wall here. But if I go back here, select that wall and move it back. Now, if I select the section, as you can see, it's kind of outside of those extents. If I open that section up again, we don't, we no longer see that wall. Uh, and if we do want to see it, we would have to change this extent in order to encompass that wall. We can even extend it here. And if I go back here to the section, as you can see now, it's a bit wider. Uh, perhaps a better way to illustrate this would to be to select this section, undock it like this, and then dock it here on the other side. So just like this. And now if I select the section here, just like this, as you can see, if I move it here, here, it's just going to move like that. And then if I move it inside, the wall is gone. So that's basically how these extents work. And now once you place the section, the extents will go from the first click up to the second click. And then it's uh, usually it's going to extend uh, far enough to, to capture the whole kind of building that you have modeled. And in some cases it's not, so you would have to kind of uh, change that in order to, to make sure that you view that. Now, in some cases, you're not going to want to have this extent here. So this horizontal line here, and you can actually change that. Uh, so if you select your section and go to the properties, if we go to extents, uh, here we have the far clip offset. Now this is basically reporting the distance from the section line up to basically how far you see. So currently it says uh, 891. Uh, so 891 centimeters, and just uh, keep looking at that number as I move this extent back. So now as you can see, it increases, 
it increases or we can decrease that if we want. Uh, so that's basically uh, reporting that number, the kind of the, the how far we can look. And also we get this little far clipping option. So currently it says far clip without a line. Uh, we can ch change that to no clip and then click OK. So now as you can see, we no longer have that line. And here we can see that wall. So it's basically going all the way past, basically looking into infinity, so to speak. Uh, so we do have that option as well. And of course, we can change it to far clip with or without line. Uh, now this with or without line, what that is basically referring to, and let me demonstrate that here. So I'm just going to select this wall and add another one like this at an angle. And let's, yeah, let's place, let's create something that looks like this. And now let's move this section there and move it back in a little bit. There we go. So here you can see those two walls, as you can see here from the, uh, uh, in the section here, maybe move them in a little bit. Uh, so we can see these walls and how far back we see is basically controlled by this. So it's either less or more, uh, but you can see at the edge of the wall, it's going to add a little line. That's because here it says far clipping, clip with line. Now, if I select far clipping and change that to clip without line and then click OK. Now, as you can see, it is still going to clip it, but we don't no longer have that line. Now, actually, I prefer the kind of the approach without the line. Uh, but again, uh, I leave it up to you to choose uh, what you want to set up for your uh, partic particular sections. Uh, and also keep in mind that here you can change this at any point. And uh, notice that this will move uh, kind of it's disconnected from the actual section line section symbol. So the section line can be quite long and these extents can be quite short if you require them to be so. Uh, so uh, those can kind of be detached, so to speak. Uh, now, one important thing to mention is when you place a section, uh, you can control how, uh, how long the section will be and how far you see. Uh, but the actual section height, so basically this height, is going to be determined uh, by what's on the model. So if I open up here uh, one of the elevations, as you can see, this section is basically going up and encompassing the whole building. Now, uh, if we decide to add something above, so let's go here to add another level, maybe here. Oops, that's a grid, sorry. Uh, level, yeah. So if I were to add another level here, it will no longer be visible uh, in this section. So you would have to select the section and then extend it up. And now we can see that level here. And something interesting to notice, I don't know why this is, and please tell me if you do know why this happens. If I move the extent here, the section line and the section symbol will move along with it. But here in the floor plan, if I move it, the section head will not move with it. So it's kind of odd behavior, I, I guess you can say. Uh, so anyways, uh, let's move forward. Uh, one more interesting thing that I would like to talk to you about sections in Revit, and let's resize this and let's flip it to the other side, uh, is actually the ability to break the section line. So let's actually get rid of this, okay. Uh, so you can actually break the section line and you can do that in a couple of different ways for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one might be that you actually don't want to kind of interrupt your floor plan uh, and you don't want to have any extra lines inside of your floor plan and then you get this little button which allows you to add a gap inside of your floor plan. So if I click here, as you can see, I can resize this. So it's actually going to display that we do have a section running through this uh, but we don't have that annoying line running through the center of the building. And this can be really useful in some situations. Of course, this is really up to you and uh, it's kind of a give and take uh, when it comes to kind of how easy can you figure out where the section is and so on. And you can always bring it back by finding the same button, gaps in segments, and you just click that and turn it back on. Uh, and also another way to break the section line is to select that section line and go here to split segment. Now what this allows you to do is to, well, split a segment. So you can click here, you come to the section line and click where you want to split that. And then you can move either one or the other. So if you go above here, that split line, it's going to move the top one. And if you go below, it's going to move the line below. And then you can change the position of that line. So for example, you can bring it here, hit the escape key a couple of times. And now if you select this section, you can actually move that part around and you can kind of adjust it to 
whatever you're trying to create. So here we have some sort of an interesting view where it goes kind of inside and outside of the building or something like that. Uh, so you can play around with that. These can be really useful in some cases. Uh, so uh, Revit does give us that ability. And if you don't like it anymore, just go back and it's going to snap kind of in the center. And now it's no longer broken. It's just one simple, uh, one simple line. Uh, and finally, one more thing that I would like to, to, to mention is going to be kind of the, for the section is, is going to be the uh, size crop. So basically this outer line, that's the crop. So we can see past that. And also we have covered that that's this blue dashed line as well. Uh, now here in the size crop, it actually reports uh, the width and the height of that crop size. So here, as you can see, the width is going to be 165 and the height is going to be 142. So that's in millimeters. And keep in mind that that is according to the section scale. So if you select the section here and change the scale to one to, I don't know, 50, as you can see, this one resizes. This one here doesn't because this is the floor plan. But now if I select the section and go into size crop, now these numbers are much higher because we have reset the scale. And now that's going to display a different, uh, the different size for that section. And then we can just go back to one to 100. Okay, so that's how you create your uh, sections in Revit. Uh, it, I, I think it's one of those topics that can kind of be overlooked. It's fairly simple to create a simple section, but I think that everything should be explored in depth so you know how to use it in all possible applications and you know always how to get kind of the, the maximum out of each command. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and if you're interested in the uh, beginner to intermediate level course for Revit, you can find that on my website and also if you would like this template if you get that course is one time payment option you get the template for free or otherwise it is available for sale as well on my website so again balkanarctic.com the links will be in the description okay so that's pretty much it thank you for watching this tutorial i hope you have enjoyed it and i hope you have learned something new and of course i'll be back with another balkan arctic tutorial in a couple of days make sure to subscribe like and share this video and I'll see you soon. Have a nice day.